Hello everyone, this is Showtime 112. In the summer of 1972, the Shah of Iran announced his intentions to visit the USA with the purpose of being briefed about the two newest fighter types about to enter service with US armed forces, F-14 and F-15. This autocratic ruler spared no expense equipping his military with advanced weapon systems, and it was especially true for his favorite branch, the Air Force. Modern systems such as F-4D Phantom were ordered in the late 1960s, followed by F-4E, but that still wasn't enough. The Shah wanted the latest and most capable interceptor in the world, F-14 Tomcat. While F-15 Eagle was considered as an alternative, it seems like Iran favored the Tomcat and F-15 wasn't a serious contender. One of the reasons for that was the fact that Soviets were sending MiG-25 recon flights over Iran. F-4 armed with sparrows wasn't capable of stopping those intrusions. F-15 was equipped with similar weapon system, but F-14 offered a much more capable Phoenix missile. In July 1973, a fly-off between F-14 and F-15 was organized for the Shah and high-ranking Iranian officials in Andrews Air Force Base. And while some Americans believed it was the key factor in the Iranian decision, sources from the Iranian side state that F-14 had already been chosen. The first contract was signed in January 1974 and it covered 30 F-14A Tomcats plus spare parts, replacement engines and 424 AIM-54 Phoenix missiles. Less than six months later, another contract was signed for further 50 F-14s and 290 Phoenix missiles. The bill was about $2 billion, the highest single foreign military sale in US history. All but one of these F-14s were delivered. But as early as August 1974, Grumman faced a serious problem as the US Congress blocked the financing of the Tomcat program. The Shah then approved the loan which not only saved the F-14 but the entire Grumman company with it. Iranian F-14s were almost identical with those built for the US Navy with only minor reduction in capability for some systems. One thing lacking on the Iranian examples was the infrared search and track, the reason being that Iran didn't want this system, finding it unsatisfactory. Islamic Revolution of late 1970s and the overthrow of the Shah was a major blow to the pilots of Iranian Imperial Air Force. The new regime saw them as enemies, many were imprisoned or even executed. The powerful armed forces were deemed unneeded, and sale of the Tomcats back to the USA was supposedly considered. But the war with Iraq, which started in September 1980, changed everything. More and more airplanes were returned to ready status, and many of Shock's pilots were released from prisons and asked to fight. The first clashes with Iraqis occurred before 22nd September, when the war started openly and very soon a dozen or so F-14s were returned to service and sent to fly cap missions along the border. On 7 September 1980, five Iraqi Mi-25 helicopters from the 4th Composite Wing of the Iraqi Army Air Corps attacked border posts in Zain al-Qa's region. They were detected by radars and two F-14s were vectored to intercept them. The lead Tomcat pilot acquired the Iraqi helicopters on his radar and dived, hoping to achieve a lock with his Sidewinder missiles. Iranian Tomcats carried older Sidewinder variants, as up-to-date ones were not delivered on time. They had problems locking up targets against hot surface, and the first missile hit the ground after losing the lock of the rearmost helicopter. The Iranian pilot turned at high speed and attempted another shot with a sidewinder.
The same thing happened and the missile hit the ground. But there was still one weapon on his disposal, the 20mm Vulcan gun. The Iranian pilot again aimed for the rearmost Mi-25, but this time hits were achieved and the Iraqi helicopter exploded and crashed. This was the first ever air-to-air -air kill achieved by F-14 Tomcat. In the most comprehensive source about Iranian F-14s available in the West, the book called Iranian F-14 Tomcat Units in Combat, written by Tom Cooper and Farzad Bishop, the names of the Iranian Tomcat pilot and his Rio are unknown. A later web article written by Cooper suggests that they might have been Major Kamal Jamshidi with Lieutenant Pashapur in the back seat but no other source confirmed this, so this information should be taken with a grain of salt. More clashes between Iraqi and Iranian forces occurred just before the full-scale war began. Iraqis would bomb border posts, and then Iranian aircraft would do the same. But on 13 September, an Iraqi aircraft was claimed shot down with an AIM-54 Phoenix missile. There is a discrepancy about the exact date because Iranian sources state that this occurred on 10 September. Major Mohammad Reza Atayye with Lieutenant Pashapur in the back seat first flew cover for F-4 Phantoms. After returning to Isfahan, radars reported an Iraqi plane approaching the border. Iraqis would sometimes fly near the border and then turn back if F-14s detected him. Major Atayev was heading towards Desful as ground radar reported a contact behind them, at about 50 miles to the north. The F-14 turned towards the contact and launched a Phoenix missile. The contact disappeared from the radar screen at the moment the missile was expected to impact. The exact type of the Iraqi airplane is not known with certainty. Some sources say it was a MiG-23 or even that it could have been a helicopter, but that can't be confirmed since no wreckage was found. This was however taking place in the mountainous region, but Iranian side considers this to be a legitimate kill. Another Phoenix kill, which is sometimes listed as the first one, took place on 17 September 1980. Fereydun Mazandarani was flying a patrol north of Hamadan. Several Iraqi aircraft approached the border, but then the ground radar announced that two aircraft were bombing Mehran. Mazandarani arrived to the area and detected one aircraft. The distance was about 18 miles and Mazandarani then attacked it with a Phoenix missile. This was a rare case of a Phoenix shot from the rear hemisphere, but the Iranian pilot witnessed the explosion. This was later confirmed by an F-5 pilot who reported seeing the wreckage of a MiG-23. Either of those two missions could be listed as the first Phoenix kill for the Tomcat. The second one seems a bit more certain under the circumstances. Iranian Tomcats continued to fight until the rest of the war, while Western media and observers declared them virtually non-operational. 
The exact number of Iraqi airplanes downed by the Grumman fighter may never be known precisely, but there is little doubt that F-14s flown by the IRIAF were a key factor in the aerial warfare of the eight-year conflict. Their mere presence was often enough to deter attacks and make the Iraqi strike aircraft abandon their missions. If you liked the video, be sure to press the like button. You can join our Patreon supporters to ensure the future of the channel. You can join our Discord server, but in any case, you can keep watching Showtime 112.